Hi there, welcome back. Gary Simmons here for the Game Institute. And in this lesson, we're going to demystify those off-mesh links which we've just briefly discussed in some of the previous lessons. In this lesson, we're going to see how we can make an agent traverse a nav mesh link so that we can move the agent between disjoint parts of the nav mesh. But before carrying on, I just want to clear up a bit of a mess that I made in the last lesson with respect to my set next destination function because I was typing that code on the fly as I was talking and I made some glaring errors. Now I did actually catch this in the editing process and I did post up um, some text on the screen telling you what I did but just in case you didn't understand what uh, what I was talking about I'll just clear it up here. Oh and by the way if you downloaded the script uh, in the zip file that accompanied last lesson don't worry the code was fixed in that it was just I didn't notice what I'd done until the video was over. Okay so if you remember rightly we had this while loop here and the whole idea of this was that if we forget to assign a transform to our waypoint network such that we would have a null reference in the list, then I wanted to handle this originally all within just the single function call. So the idea being is when it's time to fetch the next waypoint, we increment the waypoint counter, fetch the transform, and if the transform is null, then we just move on to the next uh, waypoint. Um, and we keep doing that until we find one and then we return. But obviously you can see what I actually did by accident is I actually put this in the wrong place. It should have been here inside the while loop, but I actually put it outside the while loop, which, which meant that um, we would actually go into an infinite loop whenever we found the very first uh, null reference in our list. So that's not what I wanted at all. So that was just a small oversight. But then when I noticed it, in the video and I, and I brought your attention to it, um, I started thinking, hey, we don't need the while loop at all. We can actually just always increment here. And if we happen to call this function and we try and get a waypoint and it's null, then we simply move on to the next waypoint and return. Now that means that in the next update, we still won't have a path, but it doesn't matter because when we haven't got a path, we call this function again. And you know, the, the waypoint index gets updated again and we, we try the next waypoint in the list. So that's a much nicer way of doing it because it means that the function is in no danger of tying up execution and causing some sort of loop that forces us to do a hard shutdown of Unity. So I really like the idea of doing the increment here and getting rid of the while loop. However, that's what I told you I did in the last lesson, but I had forgotten to actually remove the while loop. That's what I meant to do, okay? Remove the while loop. So now we don't bother doing that iteration. We simply come into the function, we fetch a transform, and if it's null, we simply increment the current index and return. And then in the next update, we still haven't got a path, so we call set next destination again. And we have another pop at getting a valid waypoint from the uh, waypoint network. So all in all, a little bit embarrassing, but I'm hoping that if Dead Earth turns out really well, there's a chance at least that in the end, I might be able to claw some credibility back. Okay, so let's talk about those mysterious off-mesh links. Now we saw in the last lesson and the lesson before that when we generate a nav mesh, we often get surfaces on the nav mesh which are disconnected from one another. And sometimes we wish to be able to have the agent uh, traverse the gaps between them, such as if we were crossing a chasm or a crack in the road. Um, so if I select the navigation window, we can see we have an example of this over here on these two buildings in the sort of top left corner of the level. Now we can see that each of these buildings has nav mesh polygons generated for it on their roofs, but they are not connected to the floor polygons and they're not connected to one another. So we wouldn't be able to, for example, if we had an agent on this rooftop, we wouldn't be able to tell it to navigate to a destination that was on the floor or vice versa, because there is just no natural connection between them. And in fact, we did test this out in the last video. We put one of our waypoints on top of this uh, roof polygon here. And we, when we told the agent to navigate there, it was only able to generate a partial path, which essentially just took it to the foot of the building, which was as far as the agent could get to the target point that we had requested. Now, if we had an agent on this right roof piece here, and we had a waypoint on the left roof piece here, and we told the agent to navigate to that destination, it would only get a partial path. It wouldn't be able to uh, jump that gap. And of course, there are often times when we wish 
our agents to be able to do things like that, such as if we were doing a game like Assassin's Creed, for example, where we wanted to have uh, our NPCs jumping over rooftops or jumping from one building to the next. And of course, one of the most obvious cases is when we have a drop. So we might say that it would be unrealistic for an agent to be able to walk up to the foot of this building and then jump up onto the roof. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it would be unrealistic to allow the agent to jump and drop down off of that roof. And there's lots of places in game levels, obviously, where we have ledges and walls that we wish our agents to jump over. This is what the off-mesh links allow us to do. Now, we can manually create off-mesh links. They're essentially like portals. They have an entry point and an exit point. So we say this is where we want the entry point to be. This is where we want the exit point to be. And when we plot a path, uh, the agent will navigate to the entry point of the off mesh link. Then it will traverse the off mesh link. And then it will, once it emerges from the exit point of the off mesh link, carry on its path to the final destination point. And the great thing about it is not only will the agent automatically traverse those off-mesh links if we want it to, but it's also factored in to the pathfinding algorithm. So in our previous example, if we, if we did have an agent on the right here and a waypoint on the left here, when we set this waypoint as its destination, the search algorithm would automatically know there was an off-mesh link connecting these two polygons together and would plot a course uh, over that gap. So... How do we generate off-mesh links? Well, we can place them manually, and there will certainly be times in certain custom situations where we wish to do that. But for all the common scenarios, we can instruct the uh, navigation bake process to generate these off-mesh links for us. And if you make sure the navigation tab has focus and you select the bake tab, you'll see there is a section in the inspector called generate off-mesh links which has two properties that we can set called drop height and jump distance. And this is just instructing the nav mesh baking process where we would like off mesh links created. Now, because we've got them both set to zero at the moment, it means no off mesh links are going to be generated. But in the case where we set them to something else, then these become thresholds. So if I take the jump distance, uh, for example, what we're basically saying, looking at this rooftop scenario, is that if we set the jump distance to say two meters, which I happen to know from testing, is greater than the distance between these two polygons, then the nav mesh baking process will see these polygons are disconnected, but we'll realize that the gap between them is less than two meters, and we'll say, hey, well, the agent is allowed to jump this distance, so we're going to create an off mesh link there. And what I'm going to do, actually, just before I bake the, the nav mesh again, I'm going to remove some of these objects on top. I'm just going to select them, and then in their inspector, turn them off. So we've got a little bit more room to play with on those rooftops. And then if I bake the nav mesh again, what we're going to see is we're going to see an off mesh link created between these two polygons. Actually, we see several off mesh links. So as you can see, they show up in the scene view as these little circles are the entry and exit points. And because these are two way off mesh links, it means that we have kind of two circles each side, which we can certainly see on the right hand side here. And I don't know whether you can see them clearly in the scene view, but there's also these little arrows here. And one is going from right to left and the other is going from uh, left to right. So what we've done here is during the nav mesh baking process, if any of those disjoint polygons are within that jump distance threshold, two meters in our example, off mesh links will be generated between them. And if we select our agent, we can also see that by default, auto traverse off mesh link is ticked, which basically means our agent will automatically uh, traverse the distance between the entry and the exit points of the off mesh link. So let's put that to the test. And we're going to do that by, first of all, grabbing our first waypoint and we'll move it up on top of that roof like so and we'll put the agent on the other roof piece so the only way it can get to its first waypoint is to traverse that off mesh link now i'm going to warn you this is not going to work quite as it should and i'll go into a bit more detail in a moment but it's basically a bug in unity but there is a way around it so don't worry about it okay so i'm going to press play now and this is the first waypoint in our waypoint network. In fact, what I'm going to do to make it even easier is I'm going to take 
the second waypoint as well and I'm going to put that on the other roof piece and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select our waypoint network this is waypoint network one the one that is assigned to that agent and I'm just going to delete all but those two um, waypoint entries so what we would like to see the agent cross this gap here to the first waypoint and then when it gets there turn around and come back to the second waypoint let me just make sure I'm definitely putting these on the nav polygon Okay, so let's press play and see what actually happens, okay? It crosses the gap, but look, then it gets caught in a ping pong. What on God's green earth is happening there? Well, let me tell you, this took a little bit of debugging. And in fact, um, when I was planning this lesson and I was just sort of messing around with this, um, I re it really took me a while to figure out what it was and it turns out to be a bug in Unity which is supposed to be fixed in 5.3. Now I downloaded the 5.3 beta and this is what I'm running this in now and it's still not fixed but it is behaving slightly differently to uh, how it was with an earlier version. So it's still broken but it's not broken as much. So let me tell you what the problem is. So as we've seen when we press play and we set this uh, waypoint here as the target a path is successfully plotted across the off mesh link our agent then moves to the entry point of the off mesh link it traverses across the off mesh link and the minute it gets to the exit point it seems for whatever reason that for just a single frame just a split second the has path boolean is set to false now of course that shouldn't happen because it has still got a valid path at this point it's just a bug now the problem is with our code is at the moment if we find that has path is set to false we switch to the next waypoint so what happens is we we cross this gap and then when we get to the exit point of the off mesh link has path is false for one frame which means we then before it's reached its destination set the second waypoint as its destination so it starts to traverse the off mesh link again and then when it gets to the exit point on the other side the same thing happens again that bug rears its ugly head and has path gets set to false again for one frame and then of course our agent then sets the next waypoint which is back over here again so this is unfortunate and I'm hoping that if you're watching this video sometime after I've recorded it that this bug has been fixed and you don't have to do anything but we are not so lucky in this lesson. So just in case Unity don't fix this in a hurry, which let's face it, if you've been using Unity 5 since its release like I have, I'm not feeling at all optimistic. It's been a real battle as they fixed a whole slew of bugs. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to replace this has path test here. And we're gonna have to use something else instead because we just can't rely on it at the moment. So if we go back to the nav mesh agent documentation in the Unity manual, You'll remember in the last lesson, I did tell you that there was this remaining distance property, uh, which tells us how far we've got to go until we reach the target. So we can use that instead, because the important thing to realize is that when that has path boolean uh, flickers to false when we reach the exit point of the off mesh link, we do still have a valid path. Everything else still works. This isn't supposed to happen. So we can still check whether we've got um, any remaining distance left and if we haven't we'll just go to the target as normal so what we need to do is we need to remove this has path test and instead check if the remaining distance is zero so we'll say if nav agent dot remaining distance equals 0, 0.0 f then it means we've reached the target and we should um, switch to the next waypoint so hopefully this worked earlier it will work now we should see the nav agent now go right over to the flag please dear god there you go and then when it finally gets there and the distance is zero it starts heading towards the next waypoint waypoint two and it should do the same again go back to the first waypoint again okay so using the remaining distance certainly gets us over this temporary little hurdle but I still like the has path method better. So use that if you can. Or of course you can use it now, even if the bug's still there, if you're not using off mesh links. Now the fix that we've just added of uh, checking if the remaining distance is zero is still problematic 
because this won't work in all situations depending on the settings that we give our agent. So if I select the agent in the hierarchy view and then call up its inspector, you are reminded that there is a property called stopping distance. Now we've currently got this set to zero, which means we're telling the agent that you must go all the way to the destination point before you can consider the path fully traversed. However, sometimes we don't need it to be this exact, so we may just provide a threshold of say two meters. And what we're saying in this case is if the agent sort of gets close enough to the destination such that, you know, it falls within a two meter radius, then consider the path fully traversed and, you know, go on to the next waypoint. The problem is, is our code is still going to be testing for a remaining distance of zero uh, before it selects the next waypoint. So what will actually happen is the agent will get within a two meter radius of the destination. Then it will stop traversing its path because it will think its job is done. But because remaining distance never will be equal to zero, it will never select the next waypoint in the list. And if I set stopping distance to two, I can show you that right now. So you're going to see the agent stop shy of its destination. But because the remaining distance is still not zero, our code never triggers that call to set next destination, which sets its next target. Now, fortunately, the fix is rather simple because the NavMesh agent has serialized this stopping distance property to the inspector. We know that um, in all likelihood, Unity will have also exposed this property as part of the NavMesh agent interface. And if I look at the Unity documentation, we can see that this is indeed the case. So all I have to do is say, instead of saying if the remaining distance equals zero, we can just say if the remaining distance of the nav agent is less or equal to the nav agent's stopping distance property. And that should work. Yes, it does. Thank heavens for that. But I still like the has path method better because you don't need to do any of these checks when you're doing that. Um, the has path just works because when the agent gets to uh, two meters out in this particular example and stops heading towards the target, um, the has path boolean will be set back to false. So our original code would work were it not for that pesky bug in those off mesh links. Okay then, so we have seen that we can instruct Unity's nav mesh baking process to automatically generate off mesh links between two disconnected polygons if they are of equivalent altitude and also if the distance between them falls within that jump distance threshold. However, if I call up the navigation window and select the bake tab, you'll see that no off mesh links were created between the roof polygon that our agent is currently stood upon and those polygons forming the main floor of the level. And that's because when the polygons are of a different altitude, this is no longer referred to as being a jump distance scenario, but more of a drop height scenario. Now, there are often times where obviously we wish off mesh links to be generated between disconnected polygons of different heights, such as when we have a ledge in our level that is not so high that we wouldn't consider it acceptable that an agent would be able to jump off that ledge onto the floor beneath it. However, if you look in the inspector of the navigation tab, we can see that we have a drop height of zero, which means we have a zero tolerance for nav mesh polygons, which are disconnected, but are of different heights. So if I set that to three meters, it should be enough. We should see off mesh links now generated that connect all of these roof polygons to the floor polygons. So I've set the drop height to three and I'm going to press bake. And as you can see, off mesh links have been generated all around these buildings. Now, something to just bear in mind, if you look at the difference between our off mesh links that were generated from jump distance, which have two arrows back and forth, these are one way off mesh links. They just lead from the higher surface to the lower surface. So whilst our agent could plot a course and traverse from the roof to the floor, it wouldn't be able to use these off mesh links to, to go the other way around. And you'll see that when we wish to implement things like that, we actually manually place off mesh links. In fact, you're gonna see later on that automatic traversal of off mesh links is something that we very rarely ever want to do in a real game situation. But I'll talk about that in a minute. 
So let's test this work. So currently we have our agent going to uh, this left waypoint first, then to the right waypoint. So let's move the right waypoint onto the floor. And we should see our agent go over to the left platform first, and then it'll probably come down here somewhere. Seems like it would be the shortest path. And uh, make its way to the second waypoint. So I'm pressing play. Oh, actually, what I'll do just to uh, make things look a little bit clearer is I will select our agent, call up its inspector, and I'm going to set that stopping distance to zero again, okay? So the agent goes all the way to the waypoint. Okay, so press play. Goes all the way to the first waypoint, and watch, it's going to drop down over here. <laughs> I mean, it does a pretty ugly drop down, but... It, but the important point here, really, more than how it auto traverses it, is that while it was on that sort of rooftop, it was able to pathfind factoring in that off mesh link that led down to the lower floor. Now you see it's been told now to go to the first waypoint, which it can't get to. It's only got a partial path, so it was only able to get right up to the edge that was closest to it. But there is no way now for our agent to get back up onto those rooftops unless we place a manual off mesh link. Now if I press play again, I'm just going to draw your attention to how horribly the off mesh link is actually executed by the, um, by the agent when it drops down. You see it literally cuts through the geometry and everything. <laughs> Not good. And like I said, that's usually because this isn't how you would actually traverse off mesh links in a real game. You're going to see in a moment that what actually happens is in a real game, we tell Unity not to automatically traverse the off mesh links. We just tell it to notify us when we've arrived at the entrance way to an off mesh link. Then we can then examine what type of off mesh link it is, whether it's a drop link, whether it's a jump link, or whether it's a custom link of our own. And we can choose to play like a jumping animation um, and at that point, it's almost like the path is paused. It's like we take over the agent. So if we were to just give another example of that with just these two platforms, our agent would move to the entry point and then it would stop and inform us via code that I am now waiting at a off mesh link for you to do something. We would perform some sort of jump animation that would uh, carry it over that distance making sure that as we land, we interpolate between the animation's position and the uh, the exit position of the off-mesh link. And then when we land at the off-mesh link exit position, we then tell Unity, we're done uh, processing the off-mesh link, now take over as normal, and the agent would then make its way to the destination as normal, completing the rest of its path. So before we look at how we can do that, I want to show you how we can manually create off-mesh links. So what we'll do is we'll create an off-mesh link that allows the agent to go from the floor up to the roof of one of these buildings. We'll do the second building here. So we need two transforms to represent the positions that we wish to be the entry and exit points. So let's create two new empty game objects. We'll create one up here. Just put it maybe roughly where that off mesh link is. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bake the nav mesh again and I'm going to remove the drop height just so we've, we can see more clearly what's happening here, okay? I want to see exactly where our off mesh link is. And I'm going to call that um, exit and I'm going to create another game object. Actually, I'll just duplicate that one. And we'll call this entrance. And uh, I'll move that down there. Now what we need to do is we need to add Unity's off mesh link component to a game object that's going to reference these two transforms. Now it doesn't need to be on the same game object as any of the ones that we're using for the entry and exit points, but I'm going to put it on the entrance point. So I'm going to do add component off mesh link. And if we look in the inspector now of our entrance game object, you can see that the first two properties are where we can drag references to transforms. So the start of the off mesh link is the game object's own transform. And the exit is, of course, the exit game object that we placed in the world. 
we'll leave cost override at minus one. If we set this to something else, we can incur an additional cost during pathfinding if it uses the off mesh link. So if there was another way of getting up onto the roof that was cheaper than jumping up onto the roof uh, with the cost that we specify, then it, it wouldn't take the off mesh link. It would take the other route. But we're just going to leave it at minus one, which means that we just consider this not to be any more expensive than any other way. A bidirectional just basically means, do we want this to be a two-way off mesh link? In fact, I'm going to say yes, we do want it to be bidirectional. And by default, we want it to be activated. Now you might think, why would we place an off mesh link if we didn't want it to be activated? But of course, you have to remember that uh, these properties are also scriptable. So there could very well be a situation in a game where we don't wish an off mesh link to be activated and available for any agents to use until some event has happened, like some debris has fallen or a wall has collapsed or even if a door has opened. Although we generally handle things like that in a slightly different way. And the auto update positions, um, this is off by default. I'm going to leave it off because our off mesh link is going to be static. But if auto update positions is on, then it basically means if we move around the waypoints that they were generated from, the entry and exit waypoints, um, the positions of the off mesh links that were generated on the nav mesh also get updated. Uh, but we don't need to move these at the moment. So if I go back to the navigation tab, we can see that things aren't quite as they seem and you just need to mess around sometimes with these things just to get the circles to show up just to make sure that they are exactly where you want them okay looks good to me I've got a two-way off mesh link so what should happen now is if I press play even though drop height has been set to zero it will still use our off mesh link to, to uh, traverse down onto the floor. And then when we get to our waypoint over here on the floor, we should be able to come back again and jump up onto this second waypoint. In fact, what I'm going to do, because that waypoint here is actually literally sat right on top of our own off mesh link. So I'll put it somewhere else so that when we come back again and visit it, we don't see us immediately sort of jump up onto the roof and then jump back down again. So let me press play and see what happens. So we go to our waypoint first of all. Now we've got to go to our second waypoint and it should correctly, yes, it's used our own off mesh link. It's now going to go across to, uh, to the second waypoint in the waypoint network. And what I'm going to do, my God, am I going to do it, is I'm going to speed up the uh, agent. You have to wait so long. Yeah, okay, let me call up the navigation window again. And it should now, tra there you go, traverse our off mesh link. So we have created off mesh links manually and we've seen what's involved in getting Unity to also generate them for us, for us automatically. And we've seen how when using a manually placed off mesh link, it allows us to create off mesh links such as from the floor up onto the roof here that wouldn't be an option to be generated for us automatically by the nav mesh baking process. So that's pretty cool. Auto and manual off mesh link generation in the bag. Okay, so I said a few moments ago that when we're creating an actual game where we have an animated character, we wouldn't really allow the agent to control the off mesh link interpolation from the start point to the end point because it does that traversal in a straight line. And we've seen that not only does this cut through geometry uh, on occasion, but when we're traversing from one bit of the nav mesh to another, it means we're either leaping or falling or climbing. And we're going to want to take control of the timing of that and, uh, you know, marry it up perhaps with an animation sequence. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn off the agent's automatic traversal of off mesh links. And we're going to do it ourselves and see what's involved in taking over that uh, process along the path. So the first thing we need to do is we need to call up the inspector of our agent and we need to disable the auto traversal of off mesh links with this little tick box here. Now if I press play, I'll call up the navigation window again temporarily so we can see what's happening. It's going to get to 
essentially the uh, the parameter of where the entrance way is to the off mesh link and then it's going to stop now what's happening behind the scenes is the agent is waiting for us to do something and that's going to be our cue to take over the movement of the agent move it to the exit point of the off mesh link and then hand back control to the agent now Obviously, I haven't really got anything great that I can show as an example for this at the moment. We've just got a cylinder. Uh, later on, when we've got a proper animated character, you know, we, we would play some sort of jumping sequence and we would tie our off mesh link traversal in with that jumping sequence. But for now, we're going to first of all just emulate exactly what Unity does, just a straight line traversal across the off mesh link from the start point to the end point. And then what we'll do at the end is we'll spice it up and maybe put a sort of parabolic curve into the jump equation. So we at least have something that looks more like a jump and doesn't cut through our geometry. OK, so we've turned off auto traversal of off mesh links. So now let's look at the nav mesh agent documentation once again and see what properties and functions are available for us to use that will help us with this process. Um, now, of course, just as we can tick that little tick box in the inspector, we can also disable and enable the traversal of off mesh links automatically by the agent via the auto traverse off mesh link property. But we don't want to do that. However, one of the things that we do want to do is we want to get data about the current off mesh link that we're on. And we also wish to know when we are on an off mesh link. And in fact, this property here is on off mesh link. It's just a simple boolean and whenever this gets set to true we know that our agent has approached an off mesh link and is now on that link waiting for us to do something. Now at that point we can then get information about the off mesh link such as its start and end points and we can do that by using the current off mesh link property and as you can see this tells us various things such as the start position and the end position that we want to move to the type of link it is and the type of link will either be a manual link one that we've set up ourselves a link that was generated as a drop down link or a link that was generated as a jump link um, now we're not really going to need to know much about that sort of thing for our demonstration but it could obviously factor into a real game situation if you know it's a jump link you might uh, play a jumping or leaping animation whereas you know if it's a drop link you might play a falling animation and of course we also have this activated member here which uh, lets us know whether the off mesh link is is actually active at the moment and whether we wish to do anything with it so we now know how to determine when we are on an off mesh link and the agent is waiting for some instruction and we also know how to get data about the off mesh link that we're currently waiting to traverse so all we have to do at this point is move our agent to the end position and then once we've got the agent at the end position we call a function called complete off mesh link here it is it doesn't take any parameters it's just our way of letting the agent know we have completed the off mesh link traversal and we now wish you to resume control of our agent and uh, carry it off along its path. So just those three steps are involved. So we're going to do that now. So underneath our update function, what we will do is we will create a new function. Actually, I'm going to make this a coroutine. Now, if you don't know what a coroutine is, go and check out our Unity 5 channel where we've gathered together some useful resources. Obviously, there's also documentation on Unity, and if you look in our Unity 4 archive, I have developed a whole training course there introducing people to Unity 4. Now, a lot of that stuff, especially with respect to scripting, is still very appropriate, irrespective of the version of Unity that you're using. And there is about three lessons dedicated to, you know, an introduction to scripting, and a lesson dedicated to coroutines so go and check that out if you don't know what they are so it's going to be a coroutine so it has to have that i enumerator return type i'm going to call it jump and it's going to take a float value which is the duration of the jump how long do we wish the jump to take and this is going to be called whenever we determine that we are on an off mesh link so what i'm going to say in our update function is if navagent dot is on off mesh link then we're going to call that function, that, that coroutine. So we do that by doing 
start coroutine. The function, of course, is called jump. It takes a parameter, the duration, or I think we'll say a duration of mm, two seconds. Why not? And then I think we will return after that in the update function. Uh, if we know if we're on an off mesh link, then none of these other things are probably true. No point processing the rest of the function. Wow, just noticed I hadn't maximized the editor window. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, that's better. Okay, so what we're going to do inside the function is we're going to create a loop that is going to interpolate between the position our agent is currently at and the end point of the off mesh link. And we're going to do an interpolation uh, between those two positions. So the first thing we need to know is we need to get the data of the off mesh link. And we saw a moment ago in the Unity documentation that there is a member called current off mesh link data. And uh, this is an object of type off mesh link data. So that's the thing we're going to need to fetch so that we can get like the end position that we wish to uh, move our agent to. So going back to the code, the first thing we'll say is off mesh link data. And I think I'll call this local variable data equals nav agent dot current off mesh link data like so. We now have access to the off mesh link data and in particular the starting and ending points. Okay, so now let's calculate the starting point that we're going to begin interpolating from. And I'm going to call this start pos. Now you might be forgiven for thinking that the starting position is simply going to be the start pos member of the off mesh link data that we've just fetched. But actually, that's not true. If I go back to the editor a moment, you can see that I didn't actually stop execution. Our agent is still waiting on the off mesh link to be processed. But notice that the off mesh link start position in this particular case would be right in the center of, uh, of the circle. But notice how the agent stops as soon as it touches the outer radius of the off mesh link entryway. So if we were to simply start interpolating from the start point to the end point as defined by the off mesh link, we would see our agent temporarily jitter as it was snapped to the center of the starting position and then began moving across the link. So what we actually want to do is we want to take the agent's current position and use that as the starting point. Well, that's easy enough to do. So our start position is simply the position of our nav agent's transform. The end position, however, is slightly different. I'm going to call this end pos. Now, we do actually want to take the end position from that vector that is described in the off mesh link data that we just got back. However, we can't just use it. We also have to factor in that if we select our agent, our agent also has this base offset. Remember, this is how we can offset the actual mesh uh, with respect to the agent. So we need to make sure that we also factor in the base offset. So that's pretty easy to do. Our end position is simply the end position in that data that was just returned to it. And then we add on to that, bear in mind NPOS is a vector, the nav agent's base offset value multiplied by the world up vector, like so. We're simply saying that if there is an offset between the actual transform and the agent itself, then just factor that in and um, that, that allows us to calculate the position we really need the agent to get to so that the, the foot or the base of the mesh is on the ground. Okay, so we're going to start a loop now that is going to count from zero seconds up to the duration that we've passed in. So we need a float that can act as a timer recording how much time has passed. I'm going to call this time and it's going to be set to zero to begin with. And then we're going to create a while loop that is going to iterate while that time is smaller or equal to the duration passed in. Now, inside this while loop, we're going to do an interpolation between the start position and the end position. In order to do an interpolation, we need a t value. We need essentially a normalized time value between zero and one over which the uh, the loop is going to take place. So let's create that t value now. I'm going to say float t. And of course, the t value in this particular case is simply our time divided by the duration. So time over duration. And therefore, as time counts up from zero to whatever the duration is, two seconds in our example, t will count up from zero to one. So now we can set the new position of the nav agent by doing a vector three loop. So we'll say nav agent dot transform dot position equals vector three dot loop. And we wish to loop between the start position 
and the end position and we wish to use that t value as the uh, the current t value for the lerp now we wouldn't want this while loop to continue indefinitely which it would do at the moment because we're not accumulating time in our time value so we need to do that so we need to add on to our time variable the current value of time dot delta time like so uh, remember this is a coroutine so we're not going to get stuck in this while loop an iteration of this while loop will be called every frame while the interpolation is happening so that's why we're collecting time here and that's how delta time is able to be updated by the system and of course because it's a coroutine we also need to make sure this is vitally important that we yield from the coroutine and because I wish to only yield for a single frame and then have another iteration of the while loop executed next frame we yield return null like so now I do believe our function is complete and should work let's just check we haven't got any errors so far so good okay so let's press play and prepare to ride the rodeo so as you can see our agent successfully handed control to us when it reached the off mesh link and our interpolation coroutine successfully moved it from the start point to the end point of that off mesh link but now it's stuck in limbo because we haven't told the agent that we finished processing the off mesh link therefore it still thinks it we're in control and it's waiting to be handed back control now we saw uh, moments ago that when we looked at the nav mesh agents functions there was a function there called complete off mesh link and we just have to call it when we're done with our interpolation loop it takes no parameters and um, that's our way of saying to the agent hey you're good to go we've done our business so let's just add that at the very bottom of the function outside the while loop when the interpolation is over so we say nav agent dot complete off mesh link like so save that off go back to the editor zoom out a little bit and uh, this now should properly work there you go we handed back control to the agent it's going about his business and we are now completely in control of how our agent moves from one polygon to the next on the nav mesh good stuff okay still looks pretty lame though it's still cutting through the geometry so let's have a bit of fun and let's make it kind of jump over with a kind of parabolic curve in that interpolation so we also kind of rise up and then fall when we get past the midway point and that should also stop us sort of cutting through the geometry uh, when we jump down from the building in order to do this we could just write a parabolic function but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a new member of type animation curve and you'll see me use these quite a bit in um, some of the other tutorials that I've done on the website so I'm going to call it jump curve and uh, we allocate a new animation curve for our class now by itself that's not going to do anything but if you look in the inspector now for our agent we now have one of those really cool curve properties where we can just call up a grid and actually shape the graph ourselves and what I want is I want a graph that's going to go from 0 to 1 seconds and over the duration of that graph I want to kind of create this parabola or parabola depending on where you're from in the world during our interpolation we're going to look up into this graph using our t value and then this graph will give us back the height that we wish to offset the position of our agent during the jump so let me just start by creating a straight line and what I'm going to do is drag the start points down to zero like so and what I'm going to do right there in the midpoint of the graph I'm going to add a new node by double clicking and I'm going to set the time of that to 0 0.5 exactly halfway along the graph and I'm going to set it with a value of 2 so when we're at the very beginning of the loop when we're at our start position as time progresses from 0 to the full length of our duration this is normalized time along the bottom that is the shape of the altitude that our agent will be offset as we traverse the gap and what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to select the endpoints and just make it look more like a parabola like so 
There you go. Okay, so at the moment, this isn't going to do a goddamn thing. And that's because uh, we're not using it. But what we want to do is we want to take that T value now, and we wish to sample a value from our animation curve using that T value as input. So rather than saying that we want the position of our nav agent to be just the simple interpolation between the start and end position based on our normalized time, what we're also going to do is we're going to offset the altitude, essentially offset along the world y-axis or the world up vector, some degree based on the value we get back from that curve when we input our t-value. So in order to evaluate our t-value on the curve, we use the, the jump curve evaluate function. And that text takes a single float. Um, now if you've never used curves before, that float that we're sending in is essentially the number along the bottom here on the x-axis. So if we sent in a value of 0 0.5, for example, it would return back to us a value of 2. So this is exactly what we want. We just want to send in our t value. But as this is just a float, we wish to multiply a unit length up vector with this float. So we get back a vector quantity, which we can then add on to our interpolated position vector. So we just multiply it by vector 3 up. Okay, so just briefly, we create a new animation curve. This is a unity type that gives us that lovely little curve drawing functionality in our inspector. And then when we are interpolating between the start position and the end position, we also want to offset its height uh, by some degree. And the degree to which we move it up the world up vector is simply the value we get back from evaluating t on the jump curve graph. So if I save that off and press play now, we should see something happen. <laughs> okay, the duration of our jump is far too slow. So I go up to the update function. Remember, this is where we call that coroutine when we find that we're on an off mesh link. I'll set that to 1 instead, and we'll see what that looks like. Hey, that looks a bit better, doesn't it? You can see because it now jumps over the edge as well, it doesn't clip through the geometry. Um, let's wait and see what it looks like when we come back. <laughs> pretty cool actually I'm pretty happy with that for you know considering that all we've got here is a cylinder to work with so I think that's off mesh links pretty much dealt with now uh, we can't really do a lot more until we're actually working in dead earth with our, our proper animations and our proper characters and of course that duration is something that we will tie in to the uh, the duration of the animation that we're using to do a jump or a drop Oh, and I should just say as well that obviously because I've made some changes to uh, the nav agent example script in this lesson, that I will be putting up a separate zip file for this lesson that uh, contains the, the modified script. And you can get that from the resources page of the Dead Earth channel or from the link that's posted underneath the video in the player page. Okay then, so I fully intended to cover dynamic obstacles uh, in this lesson. But looking at the time, we really have run out of it, and I don't want to start discussing that now because it's going to end up turning this video into a two-hour marathon for you guys to, to absorb. So what I am going to do is, I know I said this will be the last navigation-based video for quite some time, but I'm going to roll uh, the dynamic obstacle discussion into just one more video, okay, so that we can give it the proper attention that it needs. So thanks for listening, guys. And I will see you in the next video. Take care now.